One of my brothers has worked me for me for 14 years. He ran my chain of martial arts schools. His name is Tim. I would have trusted him with anything in my life. And he started smoking synthetic weed and it did something to his brain, made him extremely paranoid, made him extremely schizophrenic. I got to watch him royally fuck up his life. He tried to kill two police officers. He went to jail and then he tried to kill another officer. He tried to take her gun, he took her taser. This was when he was under arrest. So it was just the most radical thing I feel like I've experienced close to me. Other people have died around me before, but this was like a different kind of death. This was everything I knew about my brother being different. So he's in jail and he may be in jail for a very, 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 very long time. And I want help just with like where to put that, man. Like I have a box to put everything else in my life except for yeah. this. Sam, great to see you. How are you doing today? What's up, Jason? So excited to get some coaching today. I am doing good, man. Awesome. Well, let's do some coaching. Let's dive in. What What do you want to talk about today? Well, I, I have options. <laughs> I was thinking it's, it, what's, what's funny about this uh, conversation is that I didn't think uh, I, I do coaching. I've, I've had I've had counseling and all that, but I didn't realize uh, it's a different thing when you're like, all this is going to be public knowledge. I need to really think through what I want to be coached on. <laughs> but no, thanks for doing this. I'm super honored yeah. to actually be on. So. I have two. I, I was going to get your advice on which one. I can go into like some success stuff around a big like net worth money goal, or I have a very personal situation, which I actually don't mind being personal. Um, yeah. But it's a very personal situation around that is family related that has more emotional stuff involved. So I was going to just like be like, hey, which one should I go into? <laughs> I bet you we'll probably talk about both. They're probably okay. connected. Sounds so you, you choose where to start. All right, man, I'll start with the personal one. That's actually been top of mind for me recently. Okay. Um, and I guess my, my request or my, the thing that I feel like I need coaching on is just how to process uh, a situation that came into my life that I never, ever, ever in a million years thought I would have to deal with. So the, my family was homeschooled, big family, eight kids. We all were raised, no drugs, no, no anything, all home, you know, homeschooled Christian upbringing. And um, one of my brothers has worked me for me for 14 years. He ran my chain of martial arts schools. His name is Tim. And uh, I trusted, I would have trusted him with anything in my life. And it was the weirdest thing. He started smoking some synthetic uh, weed mm -hmm. and, it, and it did something to his brain in a, in a, in a, and made him extremely paranoid, made him extremely um schizophrenic and made him do crazy 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 stuff so he was the ceo he was 25 you know 24 25 years old no college degree making a buck yeah you know hundred twenty thousand dollars a year and um he i let him go because I, yeah. I i told him to quit he was like nope this stuff makes me feel powerful and awesome i let him go i obviously dealt with all the business stuff like that was that wasn't even really what this is about mm -hmm. and then i got to watch him I can curse. <laughs> Yo, fuck. Yeah. We're adults here. It's English, it's English watch. language. You can use the English language. <laughs> All right, cool. I got to watch him royally fuck up his life. He tried to kill two police officers. He um, went to jail. We had a $40,000 bond. We, I asked my parents, my wife and I asked my parents not to bail him out. They bailed him out. Uh, we wanted to go, get him bailed out to a rehab center. He didn't. He just got bailed out because my parents wanted to. And then he got arrested again just for doing weird stuff. He, he was like, a, he had a massive God complex when he was on this stuff. And, and, and then he tried to kill another officer. He took her gun. He tried to take her gun. He took her taser. He tried to, this was when he was under arrest. And um, so it was just the most radical thing I feel like I've experienced close to me. Other people have died around me before, but this was like a different kind of death. This was everything I knew about my brother being different. Um, and I'm not sure that I, I it, it's just been incredibly difficult. So he's in jail and he may be in jail for a very, 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 very long time. And I want help um, just with like where to put that, man. Like I have a box to put everything else in my life except for yeah. this. So I get angry. I guess how, how it shows up in my life is I get angry. I get super short with my wife yeah. when I'm feeling whatever I'm feeling I get. And, and it's not, has nothing to do with her. It's just like all like weird. I call it Tim stuff. Like that's like literally what we yeah. coined to this, 
box of whatever. Um, and I just, I want to move through it. I, I, and I don't, I don't know. Do I want to move through it? I don't, I don't know if I want to move through it. I don't, I, I just have no clue what to do with it. <laughs> I, I guess is the, is the, is the truth of it. I, I love him and I'm angry at him and tons of hurtful things were obviously done from him to me in terms of my family was always tight. Tim was always my closest sibling out of eight of us. Yeah. So for, for us to meet up and him to yell at me, the top of his lungs that I'm nothing to him and that I'm on his hit list. And it wasn't him. It was sure. the stuff he was on. Right. But to yeah. be able to, to he's go not there right that, now. Yeah. He's not there right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So it's, um, I guess I do. I, 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 it's been okay. So here's, here's the emotion. I feel like it's been incredibly scary for me because when I look at Tim, Tim pushes the limits. And I see a lot of those same qualities in me. I just see, I see like a lot of the same things that got him into trouble. I feel like I have, like, we're very close. We're very similar. Like he loves to push limits. He would do, you know, open relationships because that was limit pushing from what we were raised. He would do all this stuff. And I've followed in his footsteps to some extent um, and always kind of held back a little bit more. Um, in a perfect world, I would just be able to, to let it go and love him more and also like learn from the situation, what I can learn about me and just also why it's effing with me so bad. And I don't, I don't know, um, why, um, tons of tears, tons of anger. And maybe that's just part of what I have to go through. Like, I don't know. And if that's, if that's what you tell me, then great. Like, that's just, that's just the process. And I will, I will go through the process. Um, yeah. Is he your older brother, younger brother? He's younger. Two years, a uh, couple of years, two years. Yeah. Where are you out of eight? What number are you out of eight? I'm fifth from the top. Fifth from the top. Yeah. yeah. So middle, middle child. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot to process. That doesn't fit in a box. It's not like a bad business deal that just sucked. Right. Because it's personal. It's wrapped into that. What box yeah. do you want it to go in? Don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want it to, I think I want it to go in the box of just, isn't it amazing? Isn't it crazy how life surprises us? <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't seem like a, <laughs> well, that's, that's the, and, and let's also note that the box it goes in now may not be the box it's in tomorrow or next week. Mm. There. So it's not permanent. There are there are phases of this process. Um, it's a it's a very interesting experience of contrast. You know, I've had an experience of losing family like that because of substances, right? Like there's, you know, what's what's really funny is when probably not so much anymore, but up until like my because I'm like 49, up until like my mid 30s, the smell of alcohol on a woman's breath was nostalgic to me. <laughs> was because I was so that that's what I smelled on my family when I was growing up alcohol on their breath. So it was nostalgic to me, you know, and my, um, wow. I don't know if you heard, heard me tell the story, but my 25 year old cousin or my 21 year old cousin died in a drunk driving accident in Mexico. Oh, no, I didn't know that. His parents gave him the keys. Right. So I, 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 and it's like, those people are just gone. I, 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 I long for those things. I miss like growing up with them and going camping and riding dirt bikes was like, so it was the funnest thing we did. Some of the greatest memories of my life were when we did that when I was in junior high and high school and like after high school, but then the drinking just never just kept accelerating and, and they're just not, and I literally haven't, they were like my second parents growing up and they don't even know the names of any of my four boys. Wow. I haven't spoken to them in 15 years. Right. So, but it's not because of me. It's not because of me. That's the path they're on. That's the path Tim's on. It sucks. And it may always suck. Like you can have an appreciation for the contrast and the experience that life and God is giving you. But it may never feel good. And, and, and that's a stop trying to make it feel good. <laughs> well, yeah, like because making it feel good is avoiding the feelings. And the feelings that are there, 
is 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 like feeling the the emotional re response the reaction to that is part of the healing process mm. and if you ignore those emotions they they're just sitting there waiting to be processed so it's almost like you've got like a dead cat in your closet in the house and you can walk by it keep the door closed and put an air freshener but if you smell it you can still smell it right it's still there so you gotta like roll up your sleeves on saturday go clean out the closet and that has to do with just all emotional processing too because you're a high performer you use positive thinking i know you do <laughs> but it's but, hardwired into me at this point i know I but i don't even like i have to try like that, you have that's to try why this yeah. is so hard because it's i'm like yeah yeah and, and i am too i i don't operate in the negative at all because i'm like a high eye disc profile so i'm so optimistic i just don't I, I just resist that negative space but when you you, you got to go sit with it so it's almost like there's a backlog of energy that needs processing. And the way you process it is you're present with it. And whatever thoughts come up, sometimes we resist thoughts coming up because we judge the thoughts that are coming up. Like, you shouldn't think that, or how could he do that to me? Or that's terrible, or that's, oh my, I'm so pissed at him. Or, and, and then you, and sometimes we, we judge our thoughts that come up instead of just letting them run. Because letting the thoughts about this situation come up is, is part of the processing of that experience. You do, get to, you do get to decide the meaning of all of this. There already is a meaning to all of this. There's a meaning running right now to the situation that you did not consciously choose. Like how you're feeling right now about all of this is based on the meaning you're giving it. That's kind of like the, we could call it like the global frame of this experience. And that, that, that meaning is based on, was created by your brain based on your, its, its beliefs about life and about the situation and that. So what is the meaning you're get currently giving this situation? The situation, this relationship? You know, it's, I, I, I would have probably told you that I, I feel like I'm not giving it a meaning, but I, I, I agree with you. I don't think that's actually true. I think I am giving it a meaning. I would have said like, what, what, yeah, like I'm kind of in limbo. I'm like trying to decide what to give it, but like, which is part of it. But I think the, the kind of the default meaning, if, if you will, is that's running is something like, yeah, it's something just like he, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to, cause I, cause I poured into him for like 12 or 13 years too, just consistently. He was my right hand guy. I took him to Tony seven, took him to all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think the meaning is like a little bit, a little bit of like, hmm. Don't judge the meaning that's there. Don't judge it. Yeah. What is it? What is it? <laughs> like like that, that I didn't, I didn't do my job in some way, shape or form. Like if I couldn't stop this and I was his fucking coach, mentor, like what the hell? <laughs> like, like, and I had him and he was the closest guy for 13 years. Like. I should have been able to create more change in him or help put him on more of a, of a, of a quote unquote, better path. That's, that's a little, that's some of the meaning. Uh, the other meaning is that like, this is permanent for him. Like he is not getting out and that may or may not be true. Like he's got lawyers and he's got stuff, but that's definitely a meaning and that he yeah. has completely effed up his life. Yeah. Yeah. And even as I say that, I'm like, Compared to what I think his life should be like. <laughs> True, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me get out of this so it doesn't bother me. And, and with that meaning, how do you feel about this? So sad and angry and not enough. <laughs> yeah. In that order, probably, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, because the, the meaning creates the feeling, right? Mm. This is one of the biggest, this is one of the simplest ways to get yourself into better alignment with what, where you want to be, because what's actually happening is the, the belief of, I couldn't stop this. He's fucked up his life. His life is over. I couldn't do it. I wasn't enough. Um, that your brain create your brain was, that's your brain's reaction to that situation. And your brain gave it that meaning. Why is this happening? Right? So. How would you like to feel right now?
I do, I do feel a release when I allow, um, when I do feel sad to some extent, like, like almost what you were saying earlier about me. And that's such a great reminder, like not having resistance. I wrote down like no resistance, like not having resistance to some of those things that do come up. Yeah. Do I want to feel that way permanently? Absolutely not. Um, but, but I don't know why there is an interesting, like when I cry, when I'm able to be sad about it, that does feel good in some way, in some way. It's not normally how I show up, but that's normally that's, that's, that does feel good. That fe- that's your, it feels good because you're being authentic. That's why it's not the actual act of crying. It's acknowledging yourself mm-hmm. and the, how you're actually feeling that feels good. It feels good because I'm being authentic. And you're honoring those feelings and those thoughts mm-hmm. and that's bringing you more whole. So it may, it may happen most recently when crying or sad, but that doesn't mean sad will, is, is the key to feeling that way. It's the self-acceptance, self-alignment, acknowledging your experience. That has a good feeling to it. Reminds me, a really, really wise person I had on my podcast the other day said, emotions are the indicators of alignment. <laughs> I think that might have been you. <laughs> emotions are the I, indicator, really. Yeah. I, I like that, though. That, that's what I feel like you're reinforcing. Yeah. So let's, let's note that you don't have to feel sad to feel good right now. But in regards to the, Tim's situation... How would you like to feel right now about that? A good question, man. I'm not sure. I've really thought about it that much. I've been on the roller coaster, but let me let me just sit with that for a second. Uh, regarding the Tim situation, how would I like to feel about that? Um, compassion. I'd like to just feel compassionate. Um, I'd like to feel more. Uh, I'd like to feel loving towards myself and towards him. Mm-hmm. Compassionate, loving, supportive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You could also be curious. Hmm. Wonder where he's going next. <laughs> right. I like that. I'm trying right. to develop more curiosity. I actually really like that. That's like, yeah. Affirmations. Yeah. Be- because, you know, he is also an infinite being in a journey in a body following his guidance. And, Sometimes other people's journeys look crazy to us, but is the exact path they need to be on to get the lessons they need in their life. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's very easy to apply our, our view and our perspective. But the fact is you have no idea what it's like to be him. You have no idea what it's like to be him other than the fact you grew up together, but you, have no, you don't know what it's like to be in his body, right? So he is on his own unique journey in this lifetime, which is ca- radically contrasting yours. Very true. He could be on the path to impacting a billion people. He could be on the path to being in jail for the rest of his life. We don't know. Mm. I love that. And you can, you can, you know, be compassionate, loving, supportive, curious, and you can still be his fan and support him. Even if he can't accept it or see it or hear it. I think if you're still supportive, whether he can see it or hear it or accept it, it's probably going to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. And if you believe, and if you believe throwing positive energy out there into the cosmos for on his, with his name on it will benefit him, then it may just do that. So if, if, if you want to, if you want to feel compassionate and loving and supportive and curious and maybe his fan, what would you need? What, what meaning would you need to give this experience instead of I couldn't stop this? He fucked up his life. What's a meaning you could give this that would make you feel compassionate, loving, supportive, curious? The, the meaning I would need to give it would be something like this could be, and I don't know, like you said, but like this could be a vital piece to his story. Like this could be like, I don't know. You're right. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the most likely place, you know, but I don't know (laughs) is the truth. I don't know. Like there are definitely, I mean, as we're talking about this, I'm like thinking of people that have been in jail for a long time that changed the world. Right. (laughs) Like, yeah. Like I think Jesus died, right? Like he just like died on a cross. Like Nelson Mandela was in jail (laughs) like for a long time. Yeah. 
it could be a, a vital piece to his journey. That's what comes up for me. So maybe you say this could be, or this might just be the vital piece to his journey that he needs. That he needs. I like that addition. <laughs> that he needs. This could be a vital piece to his journey that he needs. Life works and then I could be And then I could be happy for him. This is the truth. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you can also acknowledge he gave it all he's got, right? He went for it. Mm. He doubled down. He followed his beliefs, whether that was, he's not sitting in inaction doing nothing. That runs in the family. My dad so, was very similar. He was right? all freaking in. So he, he's, he's all in, right? You know? We we can hope and pray that he he go it, it pivots in a with more positive output outcomes um, that everyone else can see. But hey, he gave it all he's got. <laughs> Trying to kill multiple peace police officers, you got to be all in on that, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You really, really, really do. You got to be all in on that, like. That's that's a keynote speaker right there, you know? Like that's a $25,000 keynote opener. How how I how, how I took the gun away and didn't die. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a meaning too, man. That's a meaning too. Like he absolutely could be dead. Like you go for a gun, like you're going to get shot. Like that's normally how this works. Did he use any of your training to not get shot? <laughs> Did he use any of my training? <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of an effed up question. Because well, I feel like he also used the he also used the training to go after the gun. But. Well, well, yeah, but he he's not dead because he's of your not training. dead. Yeah, he used a lot of his. I wouldn't say it's his martial arts training that did get him shot, but I would say it's his his probably his communication skills that did get him shot, or his knowing when to. You know that him. you can you can also say, hey, I I trained him well enough so he didn't die. You can take credit for that. Look at all these alternative meetings. <laughs> I trained him well enough. So I talk with him on Thursdays. I'm sharing some of these with him. He calls me from jail on Thursdays. That's kind of our new little time. Which it's been super difficult to chat with him. It, emotionally difficult, not because I don't love him or want to chat sure. with him even, but that's a $25,000 keynote. <laughs> right? So that's, that's because him and I were business, like his only career was me his whole life. Like I was the only one who ever really paid him like money to work. Like he, cause he ran martial arts schools and that's what I did. Yeah. But to go through this, but to, but to, but to paint a vision of like, man, if you ever do get out, you and I have another business to create. It's, it's not a martial arts school. Meditation school. <laughs> wow. Or not if, when, when you get out. Yeah, not if, if, when. That's Sometimes a, we that's need. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, compelling future actually for him. Because he's, he's mentioned, he's been, he'll, he'll be like, when I get out, maybe I'll work for a martial arts school again. I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if that's the thing you should be doing when you get out. We deal with a lot of kids. You probably have some felony records. Like, but that doesn't need to be decided right now. Right now he can. That's right. It's right now. That's his process. Yeah, you can work. You can do that when you get out. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because it's also, he may need help holding the positive outlook in the situation. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. We did it once. We can do it again. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not like you're six weeks away and he's like putting me in front of a class full of kids, right? So there's... Of course. Mm. What was the other, what was the other alternative meaning you just get? Oh, I trained him well enough that he didn't die. Yeah. That's great. I love that. And those meanings do create a different emotion, man. It's your experience. It's your entire experience. I think, I think what I just learned, I think what I just learned through this, through this last few minutes is, is something actually really powerful for me. And it's, it's this, I literally would have said, if you'd say, Hey, what meaning were you applying? Are you applying to this? My, my, my gut reaction to you, and I've done enough of this to know to go deeper than the gut, but like my gut reaction was like, I haven't applied any meaning to it yet, man. I'm like, I'm in limbo. I'm like figuring out what I'm going to apply. But then I went deeper because you asked me that question. You said, well, what meaning are you right now applying to it? And I was like, wait, I, I guess maybe there is a meaning. Okay, let me let me go search and see what those are. And that's really powerful. I, I was not aware. I was not really consciously aware of the meanings I was applying to it, actually. Most of us aren't. 
in fact, this is one of the most popular coaching calls I'm having right now, given the current market situation. Same thing applies. Interesting. Are you, uh, you know, as uh, I talk to people like, oh my God, we're screwed. And then that's, they're in fear, or this is the best time ever, right? If you talk to GoBundance, some guys are like frozen and some guys are like just drooling right now, right? Because that, that dictate, that's the story that, that creates the field you're playing the game on. And that story is always subconsciously created until you take ownership and consciously create it. Your meaning creates the field you're playing the game of life on. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's a quotable. Yes. <clears throat> and, and what I also wanted to ask you was, what other meaning are you applying to this situation with Tim that is causing you to doubt or question yourself? And I'm putting a few words in your mouth right now about doubting, question yourself, because when you said he was giving it all his got, all he got, all 100%, and I give it all I got 100%, and there's similarities between us. So I'm curious what story or meaning you are reflecting onto yourself about your own path of success based on watching his. Yeah, that I, mm hmm it's a good question. I'd say a meaning that goes something like I'm too aggressive. I'm going to get in trouble. I mean, I'm I'm real I'm really searching for this. I don't consciously think these thoughts. Well, that's not true. I do sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> I push the limits too much too. Whether that's in business or life. Yeah, something like that. And what can happen when you push the limits too much? You get in trouble. <laughs> That's what, now, man, I hated getting in trouble growing up. I just, yeah, anyway. Now, let me ask you now. So that's what you, that's what's in your head. Is if I push the limits too much, I can get in trouble. Or I can get, if I'm too aggressive, I can get caught. Do you still want to believe that? Ooh, I guess there's a piece of me that believes that like that belief makes me more cautious in pushing the limits. <laughs> Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But I, I guess there's a piece of me that's like, well, okay, if I'm just more aware that this can get me in trouble then maybe I... <clears throat> that's what comes up for me right now but that's and, and then the other question you wanted to talk about was net worth or something like that right the other topic you wanted to talk about yeah. you said net worth so because can you actually to be can is it possible to be too aggressive and push too many limits creating success and an amazing life based on my experience with tim i want to say yes <laughs> well for tim but do yes. you want which which reality do you want to live in <laughs> yeah i want to i want to i want to live in a reality where i can push limits and i trust myself to make the right choices what's the what's the definition of a right choice like we <laughs> one that doesn't end you up in jail <laughs> well you're not gonna end up in jail come on you gotta seriously do some shit to get in jail <laughs> if you were to end up in jail, that's not your decision making. That's destiny. Okay. That means God <laughs> needs you in jail if you end up in jail, right? <clears throat> but what I'm sensing is like a hold back, like hold me back. holding myself back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and dang, yes. <laughs> and a lot of people almost fear their full potential. I'm not saying you do, but just in general. You'd be surprised how many people I talk to have all these rules on why they can't go 100%. Now, now you're a person who moves 100%. You're a high driver, hard charger, but that's but take, what makes you But you. take a few steps back. This is my experience of my own journey in life, but take a, yes, I do go hard. And then I have these thoughts that I just shared with you and I take a few steps back. I'm like, okay. I know, but, but you like to but, go hard. You like to go fast. You like, do you yeah, think, oh, what do you think Gary Vee would say? Do you, do you think he'd say, yeah, play cautious? No, 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 no. 
go hard. No, I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm resonating with what you're, I'm, I'm, I'm pondering what you're saying. I'm like, oh, interesting. Like in my life, I do pride myself as a person who goes hard. And then these thoughts that I'm, that you just are challenging, I feel like of like, I, then I, I go, okay, well, I don't want to go too hard. I might get in trouble. <laughs> I might end up in jail. I might, I don't want to do, I don't want to go too hard. I don't want to push too many limits. This is not what, I, I, and then boom, 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 I tighten everything. You know, I, I kind of come back. So let's let so so try this out loud. The only way I can go too hard. The only way I can go too hard is to not be my authentic self. The only way I can go too hard is to not be my authentic self. The only way I can go too hard is to not be my authentic self. Let's continue. And if my authentic self likes to push limits. And if my authentic self likes to push limits. And go really fucking hard. And go really fucking hard. Then I'm supposed to push limits and go really fucking hard. And I'm supposed to push limits and go really fucking hard. That's why I'm here on this planet. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here on this planet. To embody everything that I am. Keep going. To embody everything I am. To embody everything I am. And conquer all the fears I have of being me. And conquer all the fears that I have of being me. Did you drop that in the chat? <laughs> you don't need it. You got it. It's in your head. Boom. And that very first statement was said in a way that your brain wouldn't understand it intentionally. Um, but it was said that way to scramble the old belief. Even though you're trying to make sense of it, you can't, but it also scrambled the old belief at the same time. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you know what to do. <laughs> I get to go push limits. <laughs> Yes. And fucking own that shit. If you get a flat tire, change the flat tire. If you break your leg, get a crutch. <laughs> there are times when we slow down. But the only person who knows what too much is, is, is you. If you compare yourself to everyone else, they'll say you're too much. But comparing yourself to you, you're nowhere close. That's right. And let me also say that getting close to that limit isn't just more work. It's not, it's not volume of work, right? So I don't want to wind you up to do an extra, like it's not volume of work. It's yeah. like walk in that talk. No, man, I, I, there are so many times in my life, in my relationship, in my just hell, my communication, like just how I talk with people yeah. where I don't push limits. And, and I'm, I'm more aware of it now, like literally right now in this moment, I'm aware of those situations because they're flooding to my brain of like, you don't push limits there because you don't, you don't want to upset or you don't want to, or you don't want to get in trouble <laughs> or you don't. And, and that sounds so weird because like, I'm a grown ass man. Like, why should I be worried about getting in trouble? But that's, yeah. But, or not, or I don't want to upset the status quo or whatever. Um, but there is a huge piece of me, huge piece of me that in my authentic self, I do resonate with my brother. Yeah. And I do push limits. So you could choose to believe that when your brain reminds you that you're being like Tim, you can choose to respond to that thought of saying, well, then I'm on the right path. Could you say that more, Tom? <laughs> I said you could choose to believe that when, when your brain, the next time your brain says, am I pushing the limits? You can say, well, that's why I'm here. And if I'm thinking of him right now, it means I'm on the right track because I am pushing my limits, my capacity. 
Because if I don't push my capacity, if I don't push my limits, there's lives out there that I'm not going to touch. There are people out there that I can save, that I can transform their lives. And if a handful of people are going to call me too aggressive for operating this way, those whose lives I change are worth it. That's a, be- that's a beautiful meaning. <laughs> and I'm not even sure I need that meaning, man. I think it's enough for me to feel what I felt so deeply when you shared that, that little statement I was repeating after you was just yeah. permission to be my authentic self. Just yeah. that, that is like, that in and of itself is just like a releasing of a thousand pound weight around your neck. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, cool. Like, <laughs> cool. It will. It, yeah. Awesome, man. It runs in the family, man. My dad was a um, my dad was a was a leader in his own way. He was a he doctorate of ministry. He he got excommunicated, which is like the technical term for Christians to like send you to hell. Cause he like he'd get up every morning, he'd study the Bible, and he like would come to these conclusions. He'd be like, I think the Bible is like really this. I thought it was this, and now it's this. He was always on like this cutting edge stuff. And yeah. Church was just like, yeah, like, no, you're out. <laughs> like, you, this is so far out there, right? My dad is totally a limit pusher. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we get it naturally. And I think there's even, and, and, and I can see now how some of that forward, back, forward, back, forward, back even comes from my dad. Like seeing him get excommunicated and that'd be so painful for my family and the da, da, da and all this drama, right? And it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, but we get it naturally. Our family gets it naturally for sure. Yeah, you all are definitely here to make an impact. Mm. So, you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm more than good, brother. <laughs> it was great connecting with you today, man. Thank you for this. You're welcome. Thank you. I will talk to you soon, brother. All right. Thank See you, man. Man.